Guys, we are making a YouTube video today about how to TIG weld. Uh, basic introduction using a TIG rig um, instead of a traditional TIG welder. We're actually using a stick welder that we've converted into a TIG welder. So, I'll show you guys what that setup looks like. So, first thing we're going to go into is what you need to get started. And obviously, we're in a shop, so we need safety glasses at all times. Really, no excuse not to have your safety stuff on. And you're going to need a pair of uh, nice leather gloves. You don't need anything big and heavy. Um, these are actually a little bit thick for TIG welding. Um, you want some nice thin leather gloves. You have a lot of uh, dexterity with your hands. Basically, you want to be able to feel stuff and move your hands really well. Then you're also going to need a brush that is only for stainless. You need to write stainless on it and keep it separate from all your other brushes because if you use the same brush for all your metals, you're going to put iron into your stainless and then it's no longer going to be stainless anymore. And that basically defeats the purpose of using stainless steel in the first place and spending all that freaking money. So you're definitely going to want a set of stainless tools you keep separate and labeled. That also extends to your cutting wheels. The old ones that have already been used, you got to get rid of them. This one, been used, got to get rid of it. All right, now we're down to the new wheels in the stack, and these I can use for stainless. It's also a good idea, oh, this one's been used. Let's make sure these are all new. Okay, these new ones right here, anytime you use it, just put a little SS, stainless steel, and then you'll remember next time you pick it up. Also, flap wheels, you're gonna need a few of these because TIG welding is all about clean. These have been used, they're not labeled stainless, so we're getting rid of those too. This one is new. I'm gonna put it into service here for stainless. So a little SS will help keep things organized. So now I've got my stainless stuff. I've got a brand new one in the pack. I know this one's new. This grinding rock, it's been used, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I don't even want it on the table. There should be no chance that you can even accidentally use something that was used for mild steel um, when you're doing stainless because the money's a lot higher and uh, the expectations are a lot higher. So you really don't want to have anything get in the way of being successful with your stainless jobs. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is a drill and a grinder. This is the fastest, easiest way that most people have to sharpen their tungsten. You can use a bench grinder, I've got one back there, but I'll show you guys this method um, so you can do the same thing at your house. I think this is a little more achievable. Then obviously you're gonna need some stainless scrap. I've got a couple pieces already polished up and a couple pieces still dark and these are going to have to be cleaned up before we put any weld on them at all. Also going to need tungsten for your TIG welder. I use uh, lanthanated. It is I think the only tungsten that doesn't have radioactive material in it. Um, if you watch Jody Collier, Weldmonger, Welding Tips and Tricks, um, he says that this basically has the same characteristics of all the other popular electrodes and it's just a little bit safer because there's no um, radioactive material inside of this. So when you sharpen it, um, it's creating little fine powder dust. You can buy a sharpener, but they're like 300 bucks. I don't have that kind of money. I don't do stainless that often. Um, so, or you can just get a tungsten that's not radioactive and you know, hopefully it's a little bit safer. That's pretty much all you're gonna need for tools. It's a pretty simple setup. Now I will show you guys the TIG rig. This is how you convert your regular old stick welder, uh, you can even use a red, you know, Lincoln Tombstone, the cheapest stick welder they have, and convert it into a uh, TIG welder if you have this setup. This has regular old lugs on it, and I got a, I think these are the Tweco ends, these are the cheaper ends, and I got adapters to fit into here. And basically what you do is you buy this special torch right here. And this torch is basically called a TIG rig. And what it is, is it hooks up, the hot side hooks up to your negative terminal on your stick welder. And then this braided line right here goes all the way back directly to your gas bottle. So you actually have to manually turn your gas, your argon, off and on with this torch. And see my welder's off and I can still get gas flow because this torch is manually operated and it can only start just like stick welding with a scratch start. So you actually have to touch your material 
and then lift up. And when you lift up, now you're welding. You have an arc gap that can build heat through the resistance of the electricity. And uh, you pull it far enough away, just like a stick welder, it's going to stop welding. So that's called at the end of your weld, whipping out. There's no post flow on this machine. When you stop welding, um, it doesn't know what's going on. Most TIG welders have a gas valve inside of this machine right here that as soon as you start welding, it turns on. And then you can set up your post flow characteristics for when you stop welding. The uh, argon will keep flowing for a little bit to help keep your weld clean at the very end and turn off automatically for you. You have to do that manually. But the upside is you can find a cheap stick welder buy this torch and boom, your TIG welding stainless, no problem. It doesn't do AC, it doesn't have high frequency start, so you cannot do aluminum. But if you guys just wanna get into TIG and have some really pretty mild steel welds or you wanna get into stainless and start getting into some higher dollar work, this is a great way to get started and uh, the cheapest way that I know to be TIG welding. Um, so with that, turn this on. You're gonna need a ground clamp right here, which this ground clamp, is connected to the positive terminal and we're going to hook that up to our metal table and then my torch lead right here is negative terminal so you want to make sure your hot side is negative uh, because TIG welding stainless is a DCEN DC electrode negative process all right so let's go over here to the table and we'll see if we can get some weld out of this thing all right to the table right now we're going to get an arc so I want to be careful with this and I'm actually just going to Unscrew this guy right here, which will release the tungsten. Maybe. Let me go get some pliers real quick. You don't want to touch and grab this, elect this electrode right here. It can be super, super hot. <laughs> so you just always want to just use pliers. That way you don't mess yourself up. So you loosen this guy up at the back. Then you can pull your tungsten out. So if you see right here, I've already got one side sharpened up. But this side, I was practicing a little bit before I started, and I was touching the metal. Uh, I'm pretty sloppy. I'm not the uh, greatest TIG welder, but um, I can get some stuff done, and it's kept me busy and made me some money in the past. So I figure I could pass this along to you guys. Here's the trick for sharpening your tungsten on the cheap. You load this up into your drill. So you just turn this on. There you go, nice sharp tungsten. She's gonna drop this in. Everybody has kind of different uh, depth and how much stick out they want. What's up, Grant? Holy smokes, how you doing, man? Um, you just kind of have to mess with this and find out you know, where your happy place is uh, because what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use this cup right here basically as a rest on your work. Now that we have our tungsten sharp, ready to put on the hood and uh, see if we can get some metal to stick together. I haven't found a hood that always stays dark while you're TIG welding. Um, you're not putting as much uh, light out because it's usually a kind of a colder process and sometimes the lens will flicker off and on in the middle of your weld. So whenever I TIG weld, I always use an old school thick shade. Um, I've got a gold lens in here, which is the best you can get. Um, it's what the astronauts use in space to guard them from UV radiation. So I figure it's good enough for me here in my little shop in Tennessee. Um, you're going to need two clean pieces of metal. This is 14 gauge material. I'm running about 80 amps on the machine right now. Uh, TIG welding is amperage sensitive, unlike flux core MIG welding, which is voltage sensitive. So we're going to be tracking our amps here, and that's how much heat we're going to be putting into the weld. Uh, if you notice, I have no filler rod at all. If your fit up is tight enough on stainless, you don't need any filler rod. You can actually get this to weld together um, just how it is right here. So we're just going to tack a couple corners. Make sure you turn on this air. If you touch this electrode to this plate without your argon on, you're going to mess up your tungsten and you're going to have to pull it out immediately, start all over, sharpen it up, put it back in here, grab your piece, and try and tack again. So always make sure your air is on. It's this little knob right here. So open it up full blast. And then we're going to set our cup on the material. That way we don't touch the tungsten until we're ready and we kind of locate it here on the plate. Then you're going to flip your hood down and touch. And as soon as you lift up, you're, we're going to be TIG welding here, all right guys?
there you go guys, just a little tack on that corner. Then we're gonna go ahead and tack this other corner right here. All right, now we got a couple tacks on here. We can go ahead and run a little bit of weld. I'm gonna make this tungsten a little shorter. And if you guys heard the arc turning off and on, that was me touching the tungsten to the metal and that's not what you wanna do. You actually wanna float this over the top. Like I said, I'm not like a badass TIG welder. Let's try and run a pass without any filler metal. See what we can get done. Did you hear that? No gas. So my tungsten is chooched and we're gonna have to stop here and sharpen this thing up. Let's try this again. Turn on the air. That's the biggest weakness of this TIG rig setup is uh, the air is not automatic. The argon does not turn on by itself. Then at the end here, you do what's called a whip out. That's where you pull away. Hey, what's up guys? We're back. Sorry about that. Um, camera ran out of memory, but um, I'll catch you guys back up to speed. You finish your first TIG weld. It's gonna look something like this. And it's gonna have kind of this like rainbowy kind of color to it. And that's where your brush comes in. Give that a nice brushing, and you get the shiny stainless weld you're used to. But if you notice on the back here, we have this black oxide stuff right here they call sugaring. Can you guys see that? That sugaring right there is the heated metal on the back of this that didn't have any argon shielding it from the oxygen. So it made this kind of black crusty side here. When they pipe weld, they need the inside of the pipe to be washed down ready and just as pretty as the front so there's no like spots where uh, bacteria can grow and uh, get stuck inside of here so what they'll do on stainless purge welding is what it's called is they'll actually flow argon on the back side of the weld too that way you don't get the sugaring um, one way to get around it when you don't have a purge setup is you can just move a little bit faster it's from heat basically so if you move a little bit faster you won't get as much of this sugaring as you see right here. And the only way really to move faster is to start adding some filler rod. So this is probably what you guys are used to seeing is where you have this rod here of filler metal in your hand and you're slowly dabbing it into the puddle. So this is gonna help us move a little bit faster and hopefully get rid of some of that sugaring here on the weld. So it's a little hot, we got the sugaring going on. So I turned the amperage down from 80 amps down to 75, and we'll see if that gives us a little bit colder weld, and uh, hopefully we get rid of some of the sugaring by just traveling a little bit faster through our weld, okay? So once again, gas on, you hear that? That's your friend here with uh, the stainless welding for sure. Whip out, and then you want to get right back in there with the gas without touching it. If you touch it, it's going to try and weld again. This is a cheap TIG rig where we've converted a stick welder into a TIG welder. But, the back looks better. Let me show you guys what happened here. Since we can move a little bit faster, we weren't relying just on the apparent metal to melt. We could get cruising and way less sugar on the back. You see how we were all crusty? See how we were all crusty right over here? And now this is the new weld we just laid down and there's none of that sugar crusty crap because we just picked up our speed faster. So if you guys are getting this sugar on your TIG welds, one fix without doing any purge or anything fancy 
is just move a little bit faster and turn your heat down just a little bit. You'll have better results here. But you can also see the difference here with no filler rod and filler rod. So my, uh, my fill is a little inconsistent and uh, you can see it sits up a little higher. And since I was moving two hands instead of just one, it's a little sloppier, but we got some more beef there. We got rid of our sugar and that's gonna be structurally a much better TIG weld. Actually, structurally, that's a lie. Structurally, it's the same. Um, the stainless characteristics of the metal is what changes when you get the sugar. So if you build up too much heat on the back of your weld and you start seeing these kind of marks, that means the weld or the metal actually went almost basically liquid, so hot that uh, it could react again with the oxygen and stuff in the air. And that oxide, is the same thing as rust basically. So stainless steel, the biggest reason you use it is because it doesn't rust. But if you add the sugar on the back, you're gonna have rust right there where that is. So um, that's something to watch out for and that's why we really need to add some filler metal and get within our parameters here. All right, guys, there you go. Get a few practice rounds in, and you can actually start selling stainless stuff. The one little trick I wanted to show you guys is on finish work. Um, it's really easy to put a scratch in stainless before you polish it. So this is before polish, and we made sure we didn't put any sugar onto the sign here. We kept our travel speed up. We kept our heat settings right. And the other thing we did is we grabbed some brass backup bar. This brass is softer than steel, so it's going to have uh, less of a chance of scratching up the front of this before we finish it and making our life more difficult. Uh, you can also use some old welding gloves. You can put leather down, um, but then you have to actually clamp your material itself with the ground clamp. Uh, brass is conductive, and uh, you could probably use copper. Any other metal that's softer than steel uh, will help you keep it from damaging it. But uh, this sucker is ready to go to polish and all welded up. I think the only thing left to do is really brush these welds. Not the prettiest TIG weld, but it's tied in properly. We kept our travel speed going. And we're gonna be able to sell this sign and hang it from the wall like we need to. Nothing structural, nothing food grade, but enough to get paid today. Good luck, guys.